Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode five of Learning AI with GitHub Copilot. I'm Gustavo, a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and today I'll be introducing you to a new feature within GitHub Copilot. It's a Visual Studio Code extension called GitHub Copilot Labs, and with its help, we'll be able to analyze an existing notebook and ask Copilot questions about the code to better understand it. Connecting with our past episode, we'll be actually working on a notebook regarding uh, computer vision. Uh, this simplifies learning complex topics such as this, and as we actually have a, a handy companion uh, when reading new code. So first of all, let me show you how to install it. First thing you want to do once you're open uh, on, on VS Code, you want to go into the extensions tab and you want to type uh, GitHub Copilot Labs. If you click on it, all you have to do is install it. In this case, I already have installed, that's why you don't see the button, and that's pretty much it. Keep in mind though that you will need to have an active GitHub Copilot subscription, which you can have, which you can get 60 days for free with any GitHub account. Now, we're going to be analyzing a whole PyTorch computer vision uh, notebook that's actually coming straight up from the PyTorch archive. And it contains a computer vision program that carries out image classification. And that is just a program that takes a set of data comprised uh, of labeled images. And in this case, it's going to be images of ants and bees and trains a model to predict whether a new image is that of an ant on a bee. So listen, let's just go into it. If you notice on my sidebar here, I have a GitHub Copilot extension already. That happens once you have it installed. And here you see that we have different uh, options. We have an explain option, a language translation one, brushes, and test generation. For this, for this demo, we're just gonna be focusing on explaining. So, so you can see we have different cells, uh, different Python cells, and we're going to be going e over each one of them with Copilot. So the first one, you can see it's a lot of imports. It's very basic, but I want to show you that uh, Copilot can actually help us understand which what each one of these imports do. So once you once you want to ask, all you have to do is highlight the text, the code that you want to ask, and then just go into the explain code. You go to the button that says Ask Copilot. You wait for your answer and you have a result. So here's the code, here's the explanation of the code above. The first line of code, we import the required packages and the, and the second one as well. In this case, it's going extremely uh, gener generic. Uh, we import the required packages, uh, classes from the torch package, which is in this case, you see we're using uh, torch.nn and so on. One thing that I can suggest is that if you want it to be a little more in depth, uh, you can honestly just retry a new selection and just ask again, and Copilot will explain again. So we import the libraries that we need, including PyTorch, Matplotlib, and some other libraries, and so on. Um, so let's move into the next one, which is a little more uh, interesting. This area, uh, as a general idea, we're just augmenting and normalizing the data for validation. Uh, but as you can see, it's a little, uh, a little uh, more complex. So in this case, let's select this first block of code and ask Copilot to explain it. Here's the explanation for the code above. Transforms compose is a function that takes a list of transforms as an input and returns a single transform. That's the first one we can see here. Transforms random resize cropped and transform center crop are functions that take the size of an image as an input and return a transform as well, just based on a randomized uh, value. Transforms random horizontal flip will we'll randomly flip the image horizontal, uh, horizontally based on a probability of, of, of 0 0.5. Transforms the tensor function converts the image to a tensor of the shape of C, H, and W, where C is the number of channels and H and W are the height and width of the image. Transforms normalize function normalizes the image with the given mean and the standard deviation. So those are the values that we're seeing here. Uh, they do the exact same thing for val, so this means that we're going to be working with two sets of data, the train and value. Now, the next thing here, uh, this one, I will skip Copilot to explain it. This is just the directory of the data we're using. Uh, in this case, it's just a folder with the uh, images, the labeled images. So let's ask Copilot about this next step. In this case, it gave me a very basic answer, so I'm just going to ask him again. Perfect. First, we're creating a dictionary with the training and validation sets. That's what image data sets is trying to do. Then we iterate over the dictionary items, which are the training and validation sets. 
And for each iteration, we get the key, or in this case, the name of the data set and the value of the actual data set, and we pass the, the path to the next part. Um, again, you can always continue uh, doing things. And if you think the value, the information is incorrect or unhelpful, you can always uh, provide feedback, which is how uh, we can keep improving the, the program. Uh, data loaders is doing the same thing. Uh, in this case, we're just, uh, instead of creating an image folder, we're gonna be uh, creating a dictionary for our data. So we're gonna be loading all that data into this. In this case, you see it says it create, creates a dictionary called data loaders, and it creates a data loader for each of the train and val assets. This will have a batch data size of four and shuffle all the data. Uh, Again, I can probably ask them to explain again, just to see if we get something a little more in depth. In this case, you see the second line is a dictionary comprehension, which means that it is a loop that runs through the keys in the first line and creates a new dictionary based on the first line. There's something extra that we can go into this. The next steps are probably just gonna be explaining the same thing that we saw in the previous steps, because they tend to add things on top of each other. So let's just move on uh, in this case. Uh, for the next set of uh, areas here, we can see that it's basically going to figure out the data set uh, sizes and name and actually provide new uh, class names for the training classes. So we have loaded the data using Torch Vision and Torch Utils data packages. Then we transformed the data to tensors and normalized it. We split the data into a training and validation set. We found out the size of the data sets. We found out the name of the classes. And we have set the device to GPU if that's available. If anything else, you can use the CPU. That's what the last line is doing. And we usually try to do this with uh, this kind of models just because processing data through a GPU is always faster. So let's jump into the next part here. We're gonna be defining this function. So this function, as you can see, once you run it, what we get is just a uh, plot of the different images and the labels that they have. So in this case, we have three images that are ants and that are labeled properly as ants and one that's beast. This is from straight up from the data set. So if we grab this set of data, this set of code, and we go ask Copilot about it, let me see if the images Okay, this is incorrect. So I'm gonna tell them that it was unhelpful and ask again. It's giving me the same one. Okay, so in this case, I think this, this looks better. The input image is a torch tensor with, with the shape that we talked about before, the channels height and white and, and weight and width, sorry. Uh, the input image is normalized with the mean and standard of image net data set. And the tertian is then converted to a NumPy array, which is happening here. The shape of the NumPy arrays is going to be HWC instead of CHW. Uh, it is then transposed into CHW so we can actually work with it. And the NumPy array is then converted to an image and displayed. That's basically what the whole image is happening here. Uh, this is a very high level view, but I think that's decently accurate. Uh, here's where it's getting the input of the, uh, just a batch of training data. Uh, Thankfully, the comment is quite clear here, and that's what we're gonna be using to, for, to, for us to make the grid. And then next, all we do is call the torch vision, uh, make grid input and, I mean, make grid function and call our previously defined mshow function to show the images in the grid. So let's jump into the next part. Now, this, is, this, is, this function is actually retraining the model. Um, so I'm gonna grab most of it, if not all of it, to ensure that it, works out, I think, all the way until here. Let's ask Copilot for help. Let's see, here, here's the explanation. First, we define the function train model, which takes as arguments the model, which is the model to be trained, uh, the criterion, which is a loss function, the optimizer used to update the weights, scheduler, the learning aid scheduler, and the number of epochs, in this case, the default value is 25. Epochs is just the number of cycles or the cycles that happen throughout a neural network when learning. Then we're initializing a variable since, uh, just to keep track of time. This variable will be used uh, to calculate the total time of training, which is doing here, is the, the variable name since. We then initialize the best model 
WTS in this case, to keep track of the weights of the model to, that gave the best results. We also initialized the best account variable and to keep track of the best accuracy variable, sorry, to keep track of the best accuracy. Now in the for loop, we iterate over the number of epochs. In each epoch, we iterate over the training and validation phases. So as you can see, this is giving us a step-by-step -step and general idea of what's happening with the code, which I think is very great. It's very cool. In the for loop, um, sorry, uh, in the training phase, we set the mode of the model to the training mode using model train, which is happening here. And in the validation phase, we set the mode of the model to evaluation mode using the mode evaluation phase. We then initialize two variables, running loss and running corrects, to keep track of the loss and the number of correct predictions, respectively. Then we iterate over the data using data loaders uh, phase, where the phase is the either train or val. This is from coming from the previous uh, functions that we defined. And we then move to the, ten the tensors to the device, in this case, the GPU, if we can. If, if it's not available, then the CPU, using the inputs, which is inputs to device and labels, labels to device. That's what we're sending there. We then set the gradients to zero using optimizer zero gradient. We then make a forward pass by calling model inputs, which also calculate uh, we all, the loss uh, using criterion. So in this case of the outputs and labels and labels. If we are in the training phase, we perform a backward pass using uh, loss backward and we update the weights of our model using optimizer step. We then calculate the total loss, loss and number of correct predictions using running loss, uh, input size, and so on, running corrects plus the torch sum. And after iterating over the whole set, entire set of data, we calculate the loss and accuracy for the current epoch using epoch loss. Um, and we then print the loss and accuracy for the current epoch. So that's what's happening down here. If the current epoch is better than the previous best epoch, we update the best accuracy and best model variables. That's basically what's like what, what ensures that the neural network cycles will be working properly and will be in, improving with time. After iterating over all epochs, we return the best model weights and the best accuracy, and then we can call the train model function to train the model. Um, keep in mind that this is basically just the general idea of the model. This is what's gonna be ensuring that the data that the model is learning to uh, label is labeled properly. After this, you can see that uh, we can ask the time elapsed uh, just to figure out how much time has happened. And it'll tell you the training complete and so on, and the best value accuracy is this one and so on. At the end, it just returns the model. Um, and you'll see further down, because here we're just defining the whole function. Uh, you'll see what the, what the, whole, the whole function running looks like. Now we're gonna explain the visualize model function. So once we ask Copilot for help, it tells us, first we set the model to evaluation mode with model eval. This is important because certain layers like dropout, batch form, et cetera, behave differently in training than evaluation mode. Now we initialize a figure and set the number of images so far to zero. Um, once that we are gonna iterate over a batch of data from the validation set, transfer the inputs and labels to the GPU, run the inputs through the model and get the class probabilities, in this case, the outputs and the class labels, which are the predictions. We iterate over each image and batch and display the image with the predicted label. Finally, we set the model back to its initial state. So basically what this function is gonna be doing is, is gonna be taking a set of new data, it's gonna compare the predictions that the model gave from those specific pieces of data and the actual values and just uh, showcase the the best ones that they that it can. Now the next part is where we're actually going to be running our model. Uh, in this case, we're building the model. So let's ask Opala to explain a little bit of here what's happening here. So the first thing is that we're loading a pre-trained model for ResNet 18. Uh, it's a specific type of model, uh, and set the parameter to true. We get the input size to the fully connected layer and change it to two. Then we use the cross-entropy cross loss function. We use the stochastic gradient descent for optimization. And we use step LR to, ch to change the learning rate by a factor of 0 0.1 every seven epochs. So what this is doing is just going to start the model and start running it and start actually uh, training on the data. This is what the, the first part we're going to be doing. We're going to ensure that the model goes uh, runs properly and the training goes properly. 
Lastly, we're going to be just asking the model to train. Uh, I've pre-trained this model uh, just to save time. As you can see, it took 10 minutes to run. Uh, that's because of the amount of data and because I'm not running it through a GPU in my case. But basically, this is just uh, calling the model, the train model function, and it's going to be training the model. Um, and given that it's just a function call, uh, uh, all the compiler is giving us here is specifically what part of this is happening. So the criterion is telling us where it's coming from, where the optimizer value is coming from, uh, where the scheduler is coming from, and the number of epochs. So basically, it's just explaining what each part of this is. So as you see, this whole model run, uh, it, it did 24 epochs, and it tells you the train loss, the value of loss, and so on, because it's all that we defined in the previous functions that we worked in. So this did, uh, I think, all the way onto seven runs. And then lastly, we are just visualizing the model. That's part of, that's from the function we did before. And as you can see here, this is a result of our classification model. We have a beef image and it predicted a bee. We have an image of flowers uh, where there's a little bee here and you can see it predicted a bee. We have a little image of uh, one, well, was, I think I see a couple ants there. Uh, on the wood and it also predicted properly as ants, another picture of an ant correctly predicted as ants, and an image of a bee predicted as bee, and another image of an ant predicted as ants. So that's basically the general idea of the of the of the model. And thanks to Copilot, we understood what each of the functions were doing overall. Well, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed learning with us and GitHub and GitHub Copilot through this journey. Uh, definitely it's been quite useful in the process of learning. Uh, I think this can be used in many other areas besides just computer vision and AI. But I hope that you found the information we shared useful and hopefully you'll be tuning into our next episode. Thank you for watching.